If you're a PayPal investor like me, you must be feeling very frustrated with the stock's performance lately. The company recently posted Q4 results that beat analyst estimates on both the top and bottom lines and instead of rallying, the stock dropped by more than 11% the following day. It did surge by 9% during after hours trading but that was short lived as the stock gave up all the gains within a matter of minutes. Clearly, investors saw something they liked but then they saw something they really didn't like which led to the sell off. So in today's video, I will go through PayPal's Q4 earnings results and talk about the pros and cons of the earnings report as well as one thing that investors might have missed. As always, you can read the article version of this analysis which I will leave the link in the description box below and with that out of the way, let's take a look at PayPal's Q4 earnings results. Looking at growth, PayPal generated total payment volume or TPV of $1.5 trillion in 2023 which is absolutely massive, up by 13% year over year. In Q4, TPV was $410 billion, which is up 15% year over year and a record high as well for the company as you can see right here. So this strong growth was mainly driven by unbranded processing, which grew 29% year over year as compared to PayPal's branded checkout, which grew 5% year over year and Fanmo which grew 8% year over year. So the lagging growth in the branded checkout and the Fanmo businesses which is what PayPal is known for is pretty concerning which is why a lot of investors think that PayPal is a dying brand. And this is further evident from PayPal's shrinking account base with active accounts down 2% year over year which is about 9 million active accounts year over year as you can see right here to just 426 million active accounts as of Q4. I mean 426 million active accounts is huge but unfortunately investors just focus on the negative growth of the metric and think that this number will continue to drop over the next few quarters and years. While that may be true since management want to remove unengaged accounts, monthly active accounts which is a new metric that tracks more engaged accounts are actually up 1% year over year to 224 million. So management's focus on churning unengaged accounts and retaining more engaged accounts seems to be working. So as long as monthly active accounts continue to grow, I wouldn't worry too much about PayPal's shrinking account active accounts base. On a side note, I've also calculated monthly active accounts as a percentage of total active accounts, which was 53% as of Q4, up by 2 percentage points year over year. So what this means is that there's a higher proportion of accounts that transact more with PayPal which is what really matters because it's better to have an account that transacts once per month than to have an account that transacts once per year. So the higher the percentage, the more engaged PayPal's account base is and that is what we're seeing in Q4 which is great to see. And as more unengaged accounts churn off and PayPal drives more engagement among existing accounts, I expect this metric to continue to improve to 60% or even more. So another sign of growing engagement is PayPal's increasing number of payment transactions which was 6.8 billion up by 13% year over year in Q4 despite lower active accounts. In addition, transactions per account grew 14% year over year to 58.7 mainly due to PayPal's unbranded processing business which is growing rapidly. If we exclude unbranded processing, transaction per account excluding payment service provider or PSP was 33.5 in Q4 up by 7% year over year. So this is a new disclosure that assesses branded checkout activity levels. So to see the metric growing means that PayPal is actually not a dying brand. So given higher total payment volume and higher engagement, PayPal generated $8 billion of revenue in Q4 which is up 9% year over year. This beat analyst estimates by 130 million or 2% and this also beat the high end of management's guidance by 2 percentage points so it's encouraging to see PayPal continue to outperform expectations. All in all, PayPal continues to display strong top line growth and higher overall engagement despite being quote unquote a dying brand. 
Yes, PayPal is going through a rough time due to fierce competition in the fintech space as well as a lot of management changes in the last two quarters. However, PayPal continues to process more money and its account base is more engaged than ever, which is a testament to its strong value proposition and brand moat. Turning to profitability, Q4 gross profit was flat year over year at $3.7 billion, which represents a gross margin of 46%. This was down about 400 basis points year over year due to lower gains from foreign currency hedges and higher volumes from larger merchants which typically have lower take rates. So PayPal's declining gross margin is probably one of the biggest bear arguments against PayPal since a lower gross margin may mean price competition and lower earnings potential. However, it seems that gross margin has bottomed as seen by the sequential improvement in the metric from 45% in Q3 to 46% in Q4. And this is due to lower merchant contractual compensation and a more favorable mix between Braintree and branded checkout. But that being said, it's too early to tell if gross margin has bottomed but this is still a promising sign. In addition, management will be focusing on improving overall profitability in 2024 including from the faster growing unbranded checkout which could mean a short term bottom in the metric. So I hope management succeeds in this area since much of the sell off has been due to declining gross margins. While gross profit hasn't looked so great, operating profit seems to be improving. In Q4, GAAP operating profit was $1.7 billion up by 39% year over year representing a GAAP operating margin of 22% which is actually the highest reading for the company as you can see by the blue line right here. However, keep in mind that this was due to a one-time pre-tax gain of $339 million in Q4 as a result of the sale of happy returns. So without this one-time benefit, gap operating profit would have been much lower in Q4. So adjusting for this benefit and other non-cash expenses, Q4 non-gap operating income was $1.9 billion representing a non-gap operating margin of 23%, which is a 39 basis point improvement year over year. In terms of the bottom line, Q4 non-gap earnings per share was $1.48 up by 19% year over year and beating both analyst estimates and management's guidance of $1.36. So while revenue growth has been quite slow and while gross margins have been declining, PayPal continues to grow earnings per share rapidly due to operating leverage from cost-cutting initiatives as well as aggressive share buybacks which lowers the company's shares outstanding. That being said, while it's encouraging to see strong earnings per share growth, PayPal's gross margin is still under pressure. In my opinion, PayPal needs to improve gross margins back to let's say 50% for it to drive meaningful earnings per share growth. If it fails to do so, I think we won't see much earnings growth from PayPal since there's a natural limit to how many employees or how many buildings the company can cut. In short, profitability is getting better but I need to see gross margins bottom and improve from here. Turning to the balance sheet, PayPal's net cash position increased by $2.3 billion in Q4 to $2.6 billion and as you can see, the company's net cash position has been improving over the last few quarters and this is in line with the new CEO's goal of making PayPal a leaner, more efficient and effective company so that's great to see. And moving forward, I expect net cash to continue to build up over the next few quarters as PayPal cut more costs and maintain robust cash flows. In Q4, free cash flow was $2.5 billion at a 31% free cash flow margin which includes a $1.7 billion net benefit from the sale of European buy now pay later receivables to KKR. So without the BNPL benefit, Q4 adjusted free cash flow would have been about 0.8 billion which is a free cash flow margin of just 10%. So 10% free cash flow margin is actually quite low compared to its average of let's say 15 to 20% but according to management, higher than expected changes in working capital and cash taxes resulted in lower free cash flow in Q4. And maybe that's why management slowed down the pace of share buybacks in Q4. Despite trading at a lower average share price, PayPal purchased only $0.6 billion of stock in Q4 as compared to $1.4 billion in Q3. 
I think PayPal should have done way more than that, which could have boosted EPS growth even more. That's it, PayPal still has $10.9 billion of share buyback capacity left, which is about 17% of its current market cap. So I hope management will take full advantage of it given PayPal's underperforming stock price as of recently. But overall, it was a strong quarter for PayPal. Growth remained robust, profitability is improving, and the balance sheet is getting even stronger. With performance so strong in Q4, then why is the stock down so much following earnings? Well, that's because management gave out really disappointing guidance. So if we look at this slide right here, everything about PayPal's guidance is bad. First, they're guiding for non-gap EPS growth of mid-single digit in Q1, which is a huge deceleration from Q4's growth of 19%. They're also guiding for Q1 revenue growth of just 6.5%, which is a deceleration from Q4's growth of 9%, so that's a slowdown in growth for both the top and bottom lines, which is not a good look at all. And then for the full year, management is guiding for non-gap EPS to be flat year over year at just $5.10, which is 43 cents lower than consensus estimates. That I think is probably why the stock sold off following earnings cause a lot of investors were expecting at least some growth in EPS in 2024, but instead, management guided for no growth in 2024. Also, if they are expecting flat EPS growth for the year and EPS growth of mid-single digits in Q1, that means management is also expecting negative EPS growth in the back half of the year, which is not good at all. In addition, they're expecting $5 billion of free cash flow, which is just a 10% improvement year over year. And they're also guiding for share repurchases of at least $5 billion, which is pretty much flat year over year. So as you can see, based on recent management changes and the new CEO's we will shock the world statement, there's nothing particularly exciting about management's guidance. In fact, it's very underwhelming, which is why the stock sold off following earnings. Hopefully, they're just sandbagging guidance, but I think there's no good excuse for management to set high expectations with their plans to shock the world and drive operating leverage and drive profitable growth, and then come out guiding for virtually no earnings growth in 2024. Also, notice that management included the following statement at the bottom of the slide. It says, beginning with PayPal's Q1 earnings report, Full year 2024 non-GAAP EPS guidance will be updated to include stock-based compensation expense and related payroll taxes. So in other words, the current EPS guidance excludes or adds back stock-based compensation and related payroll taxes of $1.4 billion as you can see right here. And in Q1, management will update this guidance by including stock-based compensation and payroll taxes of $1.4 billion, which means that the updated full year 2024 EPS guide will be much lower than $5.10 because you have to subtract $1.4 billion. So they will no longer add back these items, which they do previously, and instead will subtract them from earnings, which will register a lower EPS guide. And I estimated it to be about $3.78. If you want to see the full calculation, you can read my article which you can find in the description box below. But the point is, EPS guidance will be revised down which may cause a negative reaction on the markets. Why? Because I think a lot of investors might have missed this part of the earnings report so they might be unpleasantly surprised when PayPal report Q1 earnings that fall way short of their expectations. The same goes for analysts. I'm not even sure if they're aware of these changes since collectively they still have a full year 2024 EPS estimate of $5.12 for PayPal. So just keep all this in mind and don't get too disappointed when management updates their guidance. Whatever it is, management did mention that their guidance includes a minimal contribution from the innovations they recently announced, more specifically, the six new initiatives from its first look event, namely Smarter Faster Checkout, Fastlane by PayPal, PayPal Smart Receipts, PayPal Cash Pass, PayPal Events Offers Platform, and Fanmo Business Profiles. So put differently, management seems to be sandbagging their guidance, which could lead to upbeat earnings and outperformance throughout 2024, 
which could lead to share price appreciation. On the bright side, the stock still trades attractively at about 11.5 times 2024 non-gap EPS and 15.5 times its last 12 months free cash flow, which as you can see, are both at their extreme lows. So from a historical standpoint, PayPal does look cheap, although its lower multiples are justified given its slowing top line and bottom line growth. But my concern is that PayPal may not see any earnings growth in 2024, which may lead to the stock trading sideways for the remaining of the year. I think fundamentals need to get better, whether it is growth, profitability, or earnings, for PayPal to see meaningful price appreciation. In addition, I think management needs to do something to send a strong message to investors that they are confident with the long-term prospect of the business. This includes accelerated share buybacks, insider buys, or even dividend initiation, which should bring more optimism among PayPal investors. But otherwise, I think the stock will continue to struggle. As for me, I'm leaving my price target unchanged from my last video at about $105 a share, which represents an upside potential of 73% based on the current price of $60 a share. This is based on the assumption that PayPal reaches $59 billion of revenue by 2033, which is about a 7% compounded annual growth rate. I also assume a 19% free cash flow margin, which is an improvement from last year's 15%, due to operating leverage and based on a perpetual growth rate of 2.5 percent and a discount rate of 10 percent i arrive at a price target of 105 dollars a share for paypal i've also included my bear and bull cases which also shows that paypal is undervalued so you can pause the video and take a look at the assumptions right here so just to recap q4 results were actually good growth remained strong engagement improved gross margin increased sequentially, earnings beat expectations, and net cash grew by more than $2 billion quarter over quarter. However, these things were completely ignored by weak guidance, particularly with flat EPS growth in 2024. And this doesn't really align with management's remarks that they will shock the world and drive profitable growth. But hopefully management is just being conservative, which may mean earnings beats throughout 2024. Meanwhile, shares remain undervalued and the fundamentals of the business remain strong, which are reasons why I continue to hold PayPal stock. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel for more investment content like this. As always, I appreciate you guys and I hope to see you in the next video.